Excellent. So hello, everybody. I just want to say, uh, number one, how uh, honored and excited I am to be here uh, to talk about Kahoot and how um, our company leverages that platform. Special thank you to uh, Zainab Iktadar. She is our customer success manager. You're going to hear me mention her a couple of times during my presentation, but uh, she's a phenomenal business partner, and uh, I'm very grateful that I get to work with her. So just a little bit about me. Uh, my name is John Manusos. I've been with uh, Johnson & Johnson Innovative Medicine now for 21 years. Spent my first 12 years in the sales organization where I got a really deep learning and understanding of how um, a sales organization operates and is structured. Uh, I spent a couple of years in HR. Um, and then these last seven years, I've been in the learning and development space. And uh, I can tell you, by far, this is the, my most favorite space that I've been in in my J&J &J career. So my title is a Digital Learning Specialist, and I sit on a team called Learning Experience Excellence. And we are hoping to provide just that. We are aligned to our, um, we've got six different business unit sales learning and development teams that we support as well as a couple of um, external partners to, to those teams. We've got leadership excellence, account management, and we've also got a strategic customer group. So all in all from the field, we support um, via the, our um, L&D partners, there's 4,500 learners that, that uh, our team is, is supporting. And the way that we work with the teams that we support, these L&D teams, is we've got one learning strategist and one digital uh, expert that's aligned to each team. And that way we can help um, and consult uh, on not just the content, but the deployment method as well. So our history with Kahoot, it's not that long. Um, it's not that long. We're actually coming up on uh, a year anniversary uh, from the time that we rolled out. This all started back in uh, Q2 of 2023 when our team deployed um, a survey to our stakeholders, which are basically our L&D partners that we work with to see what other digital tools would you like to see in your toolbox? Like what could help you accomplish these goals that you're trying to um, th that you're trying to accomplish you know for for this business year and far and away Kahoot was the top popular choice across all of the teams so I'm going to talk a little bit more about that survey later and what some of our um, you know what some of the things that we learned from that survey but we were able to pretty quickly launch LEX to the teams that we support as part of this new tools initiative um, at, in Q3 of last year. So we are coming up on a year. So today, you know, after this year of using Kahoot, uh, I want to share with you why. Why do we choose Kahoot? What our rollout strategy was, how the teams we support are leveraging Kahoot, and then, of course, best practices that we learned along the way. So some of the common challenges that were brought to our attention um, by our professionals were, number one, they were ready for something new. The existing tools, they became overly familiar. They felt flat and a little boring to our learners, which is terrible for engagement, right? So um, we wanted something new and we wanted something that was cost conscious as well. Um, you know, I think we're all familiar when you work with an external vendor. Let's say we got some kind of gamification platform from that vendor. Anytime you want to make a change, add a question, change a question, delete a question it incurs a cost every time. So we needed something that wasn't so cost prohibitive. And we also wanted to make something that would be easy for our learning, develop, uh, learning and development partners to use. The current tools that we had that were self-service, they were very um, administratively cumbersome, tough to learn. And it was difficult for our learning and development professionals to invest time in a platform that they might only use once. Um, and then of course, um, most importantly, they, they were not getting the kind of um, insightful analytics and reporting that they were hoping to make some decisions based off of. So based on that survey that we had sent out, we believe that Kahoot was going to check off a lot of these boxes, right? So for those of you that are familiar and have created Kahoots, pretty simple, very simple to create a simple Kahoot. Um, we were very lucky, two of our teams, our IT team and our commercial development team procured the licenses that we were gonna use. So this was a budget neutral 
um, uh, uh, application that was available to our L&D partners, which, you know, that re definitely raises ears and people get excited. Um, L&D partners would have control to create and edit any activity that they created in Kahoot. Um, and they were able to use that reporting engine in the background to gain actionable insights. And finally, it's new, it's fun. And who doesn't like that? So we were very thoughtful about how we were gonna roll out um, Kahoot. We didn't wanna overwhelm, but we wanted to make sure that we rolled it out in a way that our L&Ds, we could prove the value to an investment in time in learning this platform and leveraging it and what you could get out of it. So at the end of the day, we wanted to empower our L&D professionals um, to enable them to be more creative, more agile, and really self-sufficient. So we started off with a, with a demo call, right? Our introduction to Kahoot and, um, you know, Zainab did a demo for the group. Everybody played the game, got them very excited. And then we shared after that call how to get started and where they can get resources um, to learn more about what they can do with Kahoot. We also wanted to roll it out in a tiered way because, you know, you can't come out guns blazing like Kahoot can do all of this stuff. Sometimes that intimidates people, right? So we did focused office hours and Zainab again was fantastic. She um, attended every one of those um, office hours and we broke it down into the subjects that you can see there. We really wanted to focus on things that we thought our learning and development professionals would get the most bang out of, right? And then we have one that's coming up you know, I don't know, in, in other organizations, but here L&D seems to be a rotational uh, position. So people might be in and out 18 months to 24 months. So we have to kind of do like an annual or semi-annual intro to Kahoot just to kind of reinforce with new people all the tools that are available to them. So just as an example, you know, we wanted to make sure that we provided all resources possible to our L&D team. So after the call, we actually have um, a website where we keep a lot of resources that our L&D partners can use. So we had a digital training engagements tool. We had some great uh, content there for Kahoot, how to sign up, all the resources um, that you can link out to, as well as a training session. We've got an Kahoot, a Kahoot account sign-up sheet. And then of course it even sends them an email kind of telling them what's gonna happen next and again, reinforcing what those, um, what, where those resources are. So let me talk about some, some use cases that we've had th over this year. So um, one, of the, one of the first ones, one of our first users were, were using Kahoot in a new hire training um, scenario as an icebreaker. They would send out a questionnaire to all of their new hires that were coming in for live classroom training, and they all had to answer the same questions. And then usually a new hire training, classroom training is about five days. So this, this went on for five days. They would just keep asking questions, you know, which, which of the following's favorite color is red? And they would have to choose like from four people and they really got into it. Um, so that was a great way um, to leverage Kahoot for an icebreaker. Also, not sure if you know this, but salespeople love competitions. So, you know, we leverage Kahoot at national meetings where there could be quite a few hundred people in attendance. And what's great is, you know, you use team mode, you can section off people by region or role or, 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 or you know, whatever makes the most sense. And all that's at stake is bragging rights and people participate and go crazy and they get really jazzed up and it creates a real fun energy in the room. Uh, one of our other business partners, I really like what, what they've done. They've created some um, self-paced knowledge checks um, in Kahoot, and uh, they've incorporated it into their new hire curriculum. So basically, for an example, um, these are account managers that are getting trained, and they'll watch like five LinkedIn Learn videos, um, the link out, and then they've created a Kahoot quiz based on those LinkedIn learning videos. It's just a knowledge check. They don't need to, there's no passing threshold, but um, there's no passing threshold, but, you know, they can certainly gain a lot of um, insights on the way that folks are answering those questions. And finally, this is one that I like too. We, um, one of our business partners at the recommendation of Zainab created a scavenger hunt. 
So basically, you know, our reps will use a vis aid when detailing to a, a doctor, and we want to make sure that they know they can navigate that vis aid, right? So they'll create um, a scavenger hunt basically on where to find certain information, and the you know the reps need to answer appropriately where they think they would find that information in the vis aid. So those are just a couple of um, of use cases. So now let me share with you. What do we like about Kahoot? Like what are some of these features that are most effective? So first off, this is the big one, workspace team folders, right? This allows content to be shared within a team or even across teams. So the way that we have it set up, each of our business units have their own team folder. And we recommend once someone creates an activity, put it into that folder. That way other people can leverage it also, you can share it across other teams. They can, they can get a copy of it and customize it. But what's really important, and for those of you that might use MS Forms, you know how this goes, right? Somebody creates an MS Form, they move on. People are still completing that MS Form, yet nobody knows how to get to the data because that data was tied to that person. Well, this is the same scenario here with Kahoot. We're not going to have that problem because the, the activities are now in the team folders and they're not tied to an individual um, creator. Uh, also player identifier. I think we all had to do that when we logged into the Kahoot today, we entered our email address. It allows tracking player performance. You know, you can um, number one, make sure everybody is completing a Kahoot if it's mandatory. Um, also, you can identify learners that need additional coaching. Um, you can see how well they're doing on questions that they're answering. Um, you can use uh, that tracking across multiple games, and it's kind of cool. I don't know if they're going to be doing it today. That's how they're doing it. But you can actually combine scores. So that was really helpful. Like at a national meeting, they were able to combine scores over multiple days and, and come up with an end-of-meeting winner. Um, personalized learning. I kind of like this one. You go through an activity. You got questions wrong. You can, it'll ask you, would you like um, personalized learning? And you, you will get a repeat of the questions that you answered incorrectly. Um, and then um, you will keep getting asked the question until you do answer it correctly. And the host of the game can actually see um, a report on the leaderboard to see players progress through personalized learning. That's uh, something we, we took on um, earlier this year. And then of course, reporting, look. Um, it's all about the reporting. It's all about the insights you get from this reporting. And I think the more that our participation goes up, the better our data, the more data we're going to have, which is going to allow us to have even more valuable insights. But the dashboards are very clean, very easy to understand. You can look at it for completion data. You can look at it just to monitor utilization, which I do as the administrator. But you can also gain insights. Like I said before, learners that need additional coaching or questions and topics that maybe are getting scored on the low end and you determine, does that question need to be fixed or changed? Is it a bad question? Or does more training and reinforcement need to be created in the training curriculum on that topic? Um, and then finally, we love this, like any Kahoot, you can do it live or you can do it as a self-paced activity. I think that's really cool. And, we, and we've definitely um, used that. So reporting and metrics, since September of 2023, we've got 25 out of about 50 L&D partners that have created at least one Kahoot activity. And our goal is for that number to go up. Um, out of about 4,500 learners in the field, uh, 1,532 have participated in at least one Kahoot activity. So we're almost at a half. And I love seeing that. And we're hoping that number is gonna be going up as well. There's been 127 live sessions, instructor-led, and there's also been 51 self-paced assignments. So we're really happy with these numbers. And, uh, you know, we are going to be doing what we can to increase um, participation and also make sure that our L&D folks are leveraging it for everything that this tool can do. So um, like I said, I think I mentioned this a little bit earlier, current use cases for reporting, those question analytics, that is a, a, a very uh, telltale sign of how folks are doing in uh, respective and specific topics. What are, how are people answering? Are people getting it right? Are people getting it wrong? And then this is how you can identify areas of opportunity in your training programs. Again, completion data to make sure that all folks that need to complete something have completed it. 
and again, scoring for team competitions or even individual competitions used at live meetings. All right, uh, considerations and best practices. Just some things that we um, definitely learned or were grateful that we decided to do in our rollout plan. Um, so first off, this was a team effort. You know, there were others on my team that were part of this uh, uh, project, as well as we had the IT team and the multimedia solutions team partner with us. So IT, you know, for Johnson & Johnson, any kind of outside third-party vendor tool, tech, technology tool that we're gonna use has to go through BPRA and compliance assessments. And, um, you know, our IT partner, Rick Morris, was able to do that very effectively. And then we've got our uh, multimedia solutions uh, team that was part of this onboarding. They were trained on how to create uh, Kahoot activities. But most importantly, for these large meetings, you know, I could be sitting on an L&D team and I created this Kahoot. But I'm not going to be the person sitting in the back of the room executing it on the screen for everybody to do live. So what we did was we gave the multimedia solutions team that do attend these meetings, these large scale meetings. Um, they are trained now to execute these activities from the back of the room, again, because we can share activities and they can run it. Somebody else can run it. Um, that works really well and puts the L&D professionals at ease at a meeting and allows them to focus on what they're there for. Our contract includes a partnership with a Kahoot customer success manager. Um, Zainab is phenomenal. Um, she's a critical component to our success and I can't uh, thank her enough. Um, build a thoughtful and deliberate project plan, a SharePoint page, tutorial document, uh, documentation, just to have a unified campaign. Don't recreate the wheel. Kahoot offers tremendous and robust training resources on their website. And look, every once in a while, spotlight successful activities or lessons learned with your partners that are using this tool. It helps show people what other people are doing so they can also generate some ideas and think about some things they can try with their teams.